seems that what's old is new again. And so it is with meme stocks, including and in particular GameStop, which has had rather a lot of renewed interest, including some very wild price fluctuations. It's also featured a return of Roaring Kitty, otherwise known as Deep Effing Value. And this culminated in a live stream in which he enunciated his investment thesis behind GameStop, such as it is, and why it is that he seemingly holds such a large position in GameStop's stock. So I thought I would unpackage Roaring Kitty's logic, such as it is, and if you've got any thoughts about it, well, let me know that in the comments below. And in short, I wasn't really very convinced by his logic, and it seems the market wasn't either. Because on the day of his live stream, GameStop stock went down quite significantly, so it doesn't appear that other people are really buying into it. Nevertheless, he really laid out a few core arguments behind why he's invested in GameStop. So let's go through those. The first of his arguments is that GameStop is at a transition point. It's at an inflection point and things will turn around. Now this doesn't seem to be brilliant logic, but here's what Roaring Kitty had to say. I mean, I've talked a lot about GameStop and uh, how I feel about the situation and all that. And um, I, I thought I wanted to hop on and kind of reiterate a lot of my viewpoints that I have previously. And um, and uh, yeah, I think, remember if you t remember my previous thoughts on the company and the opportunity, there was kind of like a two-part thesis to it. And that second part of the thesis is a, is, a, is a reinvention of the business model or a transformation, whatever you want to call it. And I, I just, to remind people who, if you haven't seen my materials, that we're in that second part of it here, where it's less about, I see a, over the past couple of years, I see an overemphasis on like that legacy business. And um, it's just, there's no over, it matters. It's not that it doesn't matter, of course, but they're in the transformation stage here. And um, what could they transform into? You know what I mean? There's a lot of question marks about that, understandably so. So let's unpackage his logic here. Is there anything behind this? Well, he seemed to state that he believes there's a transition point. He seemed to state that he believes the GameStop could have some other business model percolating along. And he seemed to believe that the mere fact that they haven't said anything yet isn't evidence there isn't a plan, rather they just haven't revealed that plan yet. Now, in my opinion, that logic doesn't really stack up very much. Because if GameStop is going to have a plan to turn itself around, it needs to communicate that to the market. If GameStop is going to go to the market and say, we want some more money, trust us to invest your money in something that's going to create value, they need to tell us why. And they don't seem to have really done this, at least not effectively and convincingly. I don't think, trust me bro, is a good enough reason for investing in a company. I don't think blind faith in a company turning things around is a good reason. That's kind of akin to when people just double down on a gamble. They have invested in a company that's losing money or are losing stock, and then just double down and double down and double down, and then eventually their investment goes to zero. Or like the gambler who thinks that one more pull of the poker machine is going to result in a massive winning to offset all of their losses. I don't think it makes a ton of sense to just blindly believe they can turn things around. Notably, if we look at analysts' forecasts for GameStop, they aren't exactly pleasant, and they aren't exactly strong. Now, there's not many analysts that actually follow GameStop, but according to those on FactSet, it's pretty much an overwhelming sell recommendation, meaning that the analysts that are following it, and aren't many, don't seem to believe the turnaround story. Roaring Kitty's next argument was that the management team at GameStop appears to be competent and could turn things around, and he particularly emphasized Ryan Cohen, the CEO. Here's what Roaring Kitty had to say. But essentially it becomes at this stage of that second part of the analysis, this transformation part, it becomes uh, a, a bet on the management. You know, in particular, of course, Ryan fucking Cohen. You know what I'm saying? Ryan Cohen and his crew. And that is the, that's what folks are, 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 are uh, should be focused on. You know what I mean? And that's probably going to be an ongoing debate as to how people feel about him, whether he can successfully transform that business. And those are great, great discussions. And there's, uh, those are good discussions that need to be had. And so when I look at the situation, though, and I've, uh, I'm kind of going to be echoing some of the thoughts that I had previously, is that I think I feel like I see enough where I, um, I, 
I believe this guy might, he might be able to do it, right? That's not a guarantee. This is the same thing as before. I mean, I'm not promising anything, but over the over the long term here, I think he, he seems like the type of guy, he seems like he has those characteristics and the way he approaches this seems like he might be able to do this. But again, that's not a guarantee. This is kind of like, it's kind of based on feel. You've heard me say that, right? Um, and so I have that feeling. I have this feeling and I'm like, all right, let me, uh, let me reiterate some of these feelings that I have, but it remains to be seen, you know, and, uh, you should keep your eye on stuff too. reserve the right to change your mind about stuff. Just like I do. Don't follow anyone blindly. Nothing on this stream is advice. Hopefully you all know that, right? This is the same thing. But like when I have a feeling about that, it's like, all right, well, let me share it. I could be wrong about stuff, but I think, all right, let's talk about it. He seems to be doing the right things. And I know the question marks will be, well, what has he done? What is he doing? What's the plan? You know, those are fair questions. But, you know, do you really think he's been doing nothing or, or that GameStop hasn't been strategizing, testing some things here and there and how to uh, how to move forward? I think that's pretty ridiculous. I think that's I think we've seen enough. Again, we haven't seen anything. It's speculation. You can argue that. But honestly, the way he seems to be handling this and we don't know a plan and that's fair. But boy, uh, yeah, you're, you're right-sizing the ship. You see uh, even the legacy business cutting costs, trying to stabilize some cash flows, you know, just try to stabilize that legacy business. But now it's all about the transformation. We'll see more. That's the thing. I think some people say, oh, a lot of time has passed. We ain't seen shit. And that's fair too. But again, I think because of the uniqueness of the situation, I think... I think I think generally in this type of case, be like being quiet, working on stuff behind the scenes, um, and uh, thinking about what you're gonna do um, uh, it c can be a, a good I could be a good approach. Now here again, I would dispute Rory and Kitty's logic. In particular, Ryan Cohen has been at GameStop for three years, and a plan seemingly has not materialized. So much like he indicated before, the mere fact that you believe there might be a plan is not an investment thesis. It's not a reason to invest in the company. The company needs to actually show something. And Ryan Cohen doesn't appear to have shown a lot over the course of the past three years. Now to be fair, Ryan Cohen, or at least his investment vehicle, do own a lot of GameStop stock. So there is at least skin in the game here. And they're not really taking a salary so much as owning some 12% of the shares through their investment vehicles. However, that doesn't tell us that he necessarily has a plan. It tells us he has skin in the game, which is great, and that's something that CEOs should have. But that in and of itself is not sufficient. And therefore, I would disagree again with Rory and Kitty's logic here. The management team being competent, I don't think is actually made out given their track record, and it isn't necessarily enough when you have underlying problems with the actual business. The best management team in the world could have difficulty turning around a business that inherently has issues. Perhaps the only argument for maybe considering GameStop is there does appear to have been a slight improvement in the fundamentals over the past year, albeit not necessarily a turnaround to make the company really very good. So for example, GameStop has been trying to trim expenses. They have significantly improved their margin to be fair to GameStop. So for example, their EBITDA margin is 6.98% at the moment versus 1.61 in the prior period, which is a drastic improvement. They've also closed quite a number of stores, albeit opening up a couple of other ones, seemingly trying to focus on the areas where they might be able to make some more profits going forward, maybe. Their sales have declined, but it appears that decline in sales has been somewhat offset by an improvement in their expenses. Furthermore, they do appear to have a positive net income according to their latest annual report, which stands in stark contrast to the negative net income from the prior five years. However, the net income is still incredibly low, and they're getting there by drastically reducing the size of the company. And they don't appear to have actually pivoted to alter their fundamentals in a way that is going to create more growth going forward. Rorinkity's third strand is that everyone is rooting for GameStop, and everyone really wants it to succeed. And there's a lot of hope behind GameStop. And this is what Roaring Kitty had to say. Where you have, you actually have so many people rooting for it, right? They're rooting for it to work out, myself included. How often does that happen? You have a lot of investors kind of following what's happening, um, kind of wanting it to work out. You know what I say? That's very unusual. Now, my response to this is firstly, that hopium is not a strategy for turning around a company. So I don't think that's sufficient for one to want to invest in a firm. However, of course, if there's a lot of support, a lot of public support for a company, that can help to buoy its profits. It can help to perhaps get more customers behind the door. It can help to perhaps get more sales. But that doesn't appear to have translated. 
It appears there's a lot of people who really want the stock to succeed, or at least a non-trivial number. But that doesn't seem to be actually translating into sales. People going and buying shares doesn't change the fundamentals behind the company. It can create short-term price pressure. It can push the stock price up. It can perhaps cause some short sellers to have to cover their shorts. However, that is not sufficient for the company's fundamentals to improve over the long term. And short-term price pressure isn't going to be a long-term strategy. It might help GameStop to go and raise some capital, and then if they actually use that money wisely, they might be able to improve their operations. But absent something else, it isn't really going to help. Furthermore, I would note the GameStop has been super volatile. And on the day that Roaring Kitty was doing his live stream, GameStop stock was done significantly. So it appears that while there might be a lot of positivity, there's not enough positivity to really create a lot of price support, at least at a high level, and certainly not at the levels that we'd seen before. So overall, therefore, I would disagree with Roaring Kitty. I am not putting any of my money into GameStop, and I think there would be a massive risk behind doing so. Furthermore, I'm in the process of getting registered to be able to raise a fund, and I would not be putting investor money into GameStop either. Now, of course, things could change in the future. There could be a situation where GameStop becomes a good investment. It could be that GameStop articulates at some point in the future a good strategy to improve its performance. They might be able to turn around their operations, but at the moment, they haven't. Hence why I would not really be investing in them. Nevertheless, let me know your thoughts about GameStop in the comments below. Are you investing in GameStop? Do you agree with Roaring Kitty? Or do you think he's maybe just a little bit too optimistic? I'd be interested to hear what you think.